So now let's consider a 2D inlet outlet. Uh, where the flow velocity is not uniform over the area of uh, that inlet or outlet. So here's one example. Uh, this is the area we're talking about. And we uh, can see that there is a velocity profile that starts from zero near the walls of the pipe. This is a round pipe. And the mass flow rate is going in this direction. And we see that near the center line you have a maximum velocity and at the wall you have zero velocity because of the no slip condition that we have um, discussed in a previous uh, lecture so the question would be can you compute if i give you what this velocity distribution over this area a um, I give you a mathematical formula, can you find what the mass flow rate or the volumetric flow rate going through it is going to be? So this is the question we are trying to uh, to answer. So the answer is yes. M dot will be uh, the integral of rho v relative dot NDA over this particular, uh, over this region of the control surface. Uh, and we need to find a relationship between the velocity V and the area a. In this particular example, the velocities, all the velocities are perpendicular to the area, so that's why uh, the dot product gives you a cosine theta of one. Uh, so we we drop it, so we'll be we'll get v d a, and then uh, for the velocity we need the velocity distribution as a function of radial distance r uh, times d a. So if I have so we can't go any further unless we have uh, some description of the velocity as a function of r. Uh, volumetric flow rate, if we're interested in that, it's just the mass flow rate divided by the density. And it will then you will end up with the average velocity times, so that's really that's actually for 1D type of flow. If you now, uh, not 2D, that's 1D, if in the previous example you were able to find the m dot, you can get now um, uh, you can get an average velocity equivalent, which is uh, the volumetric flow rate divided by the cross-sectional area, or uh, the mass flow rate divided by the cross-sectional area. So that's the average velocity. So I think maybe should write it here a 1d equivalent to this 2d problem is the average velocity would be uh, the m dot uh, over rho a m dot divided by the density divided by uh, the area rho times a so and you can check that it's um, that it's dimensionally consistent. The mass flow rate is kilogram per second. This is a kilogram per meter cubed. So the kilogram cancels out. And you have meter squared over meter cubed. So you get uh, a meter per second. So you get one over a meter, it goes up. So it's, um, you get a unit of meter per second for this, um, average velocity. So let's now propose a velocity distribution U of R um, for this 2D inlet outlet problem. Now what I'm going to uh, propose is that U of R, it looks parabolic and uh, we have a maximum of U0 at R equal, uh, so here our coordinate system, radial uh, coordinate and axial coordinate X. Radial coordinate goes from zero to capital R which is the wall of the pipe. So at r equal to 0, I get u0, which is what I have here. And at r equal to capital R, I get 1 minus 1, I get a 0 velocity or the no-slip condition. Um, so this formula represents my um, velocity distribution shown in the uh, curve, in, the, in this curve. So now what we see is that if I'm interested in the in this 
in the mass flow rate that's crossing this particular area, and this is a round pipe of round R, we can see that the velocity is perpendicular everywhere, so that helps us with the cosine theta. Uh, it's the uh, velocity is perpendicular to the area, which means it's parallel to the normal to the area, the normal vector m. So, which means um, we, we get rid of the cosine theta, it's going to be 1. And now, the other thing that you need to notice is the velocity itself uh, varies from 0 at the wall to uh, maximal u0 at the center line. Um, so, this is a two-dimensional uh, flow field that we need... Um, we cannot just multiply the velocity u0 times the area. We need to get some average velocity. Uh, so one way of, uh, the actually the best way of, um, uh, of doing this is let's, uh, let's pick a small tiny area dA. So this is very tiny elemental area dA uh, through which the velocity is perpendicular. But if this dA is very small, then the velocity variation over this area dA is actually in not going to be significant. So I can consider my velocity to be uniform over this area. So now I can compute a mass flow rate going through this area, just this elemental area dA, which is dm dot. So I put d to signify that it's elemental in this for this element. And what is it? Um, what is the formula for that? It's the density times the area times the velocity. So here's your density, the velocity is u of r. We already said we want to get rid of the, you know, um, the cosine theta, uh, cosine 0 of 1. So now we get y and multiplied by the area. So density times velocity times area, which is what we have here. And the area is, B, is dA. It's a very, uh, very small area. Uh, and if we look at that area from a side view, so here, here we, we see a cross-sectional view, but now if we look at a front view of, of the pipe, we see the pipe of diameter capital R, uh, which is um, right here, and R being measured from the center line. So at any location, I have the coordinate system R. And uh, what you will see is that this particular area, if you look at it from a front view, it's this uh, shaded uh, area. And it its magnitude of this cross-sectional area uh, is the um, circumference multiplied by the width of it. And the width of it is, uh, here the width is dr, so it means it's more, so that's dr, which is in fact this, um, this height here between those two dashed lines is dr. Very good. Um, so, my, so I substitute for dA with 2 pi r dr, and cosine theta, I just said it, cosine the 0 is 1. So um, then uh, to get the whole mass flow rate over this, uh, over this um, cross-sectional area, I am going to break my, so this is the dm, dm dot goes through this shaded area perpendicular to it into the page uh, or out of the page. And um, then what I need to do is have an infinite number of those dA's at different locations R and sum them up, which means I need to uh, integrate when you have an infinite number of elements to integrate. Uh, so my m dot is just the infinite summation of all these dm dots which we signify by the integral and we are summing over the area a the whole area of the pipe uh, a so that's my area which is pi r squared uh, and that would be equal to um, rho r dr as we had before so let's substitute for u of r and for da uh, with da as we have seen uh, so my dm dot will be rho and for u of r will be u0 1 minus r of r square and for the area is 2 pi r dr. Um, so we integrated here for the m dot over the area and the area really is uh, goes from r equals 0 to in terms of the integrand now the integrand was dA 
so we integrate over area a and when the integrand integrand is dr we are integrating this thing uh, from r equal to zero to capital r so that's what we are uh, what we do here and you end up with uh, this formula with r square and r to the power four um, so you implement the limits r equals zero to r equal capital R. So you plug that in and you're going to get a formula for the mass flow rate. So now we have integrated for each elemental area dA over the whole area, um, the whole cross section of the pipe and we get a mass flow rate over uh, pi times rho times u0 times r square over 2. Um, so what you what you notice over here uh, is that uh, you can get this m dot to be so now we're getting we're getting a one d equivalent equivalent is rho a times some average velocity which is u zero over two so that's our so we started with a two d problem and now the 1D equivalent, so a pipe of the same radius of the same fluid density will have the same mass flow rate going through uh, this exact pipe when you have a uniform velocity of u0 over 2. So what that means is um, if I have a uniform velocity profile that looks like this and um, the velocity is u0 over 2 so that's u0 over 2 and here you get another u0 over 2 you get your maximum and then um, let's see. then the red curve and the pink curve will give you the exact same mass flow rate going through the same uh, section except one is a 1d problem and one is a 2d problem and now we can and typically as you when you uh, will see what you will see in the coming problems is that when I give you that the average velocity in the pipe it comes from a calculation uh, like this uh, it's oftentimes easier to uh, work with 1d type problems it's just um, you get uh, a very quick answer without having to go through the whole math of integration um, so it's it's very useful it involves so in mass flow rate it's it, it is exact but when we start talking about momentum and energy um, using an average velocity involves some error in the uh, forces and the momentum fluxes but for the most part it's still gonna be uh, good enough okay so that's our 1d equivalent which is the average uh, flow velocity and then I can get a volumetric flow rate so now we have a volumetric flow rate is a mass flow rate divided by a density so it's just the a times the average uh, velocity um, so here is here is an example of um, of a 2d flow and it's 1d equivalent now we can look at this other example right here you have a tank uh, of cross-sectional area a tank and uh, you have flow coming from two sides uh, water flow and there is air at the top of the tank so uh, at any at a, at this particular instant in time the height of the water is h and uh, the maximum capacity of the tank can get um, is is a height of h in in terms of water so we're doing mass conservation when water comes into the tank it has to displace the air um, somewhere else it either displaces uh, displaces it or it compresses it and if it compresses it it stays here and water comes and reduces its volume um, so mass of water is conserved mass of air is conserved in this case if there's a vent then it's easier for the air to just leave and um, uh, keep its density and the the mass balance the mass balance whether it's the unsteady term or the flux term should all uh, even out for the air side as well as for the water side uh, and in this case we have m.1 and m.2 
um, and that gives us uh, the rate of change of mass inside when you sum m.1 and m.2 we get the rate of change of mass inside the tank which is dm by dt inside this uh, tank and because both of them are positive they come into um, they are in to the tank then the rate of change of mass inside the tank is positive which means it's an increase in small h So now let's do this particular problem. Um, we have a cylindrical tank of diameter 75 centimeter, um, and it has a maximum height of one meter. At time t equals zero, the level of water is 30 centimeter deep. And uh, this bottom of the tank is connected to a pipe. Uh, the pipe carries in water at two and a half meter per second, and the water leaves at 1.9 meter per second from the other end of the pipe. Uh, the pipe has a constant diameter of 12 centimeter. And the question is, um, so you intuitively you'll see that the, that the mass fluid that comes in uh, is more than what leaves the pipe, so something has to give and has to go through here because the water is incompressible. Uh, there is no we don't expect a change in density, uh, so all the water um, water cannot accumulate in this pipe, so it has to go um, and feed into the tank. So this this type of tank is called a surge tank, um, and imagine you have um, imagine that this thing is a cutout of an industrial uh, process an industrial process. Uh, so you have an upstream process here and you have a downstream process uh, that this upstream process produces water at a certain rate, mass flow rate, and the downstream process uh, consumes water at a certain mass flow rate. Um, typically when you start up the system or in, uh, at certain moments in its operation um, what you, when you have an imbalance between uh, what the upstream is producing and what the downstream is is consuming then uh, you're going to get uh, accumulation in the pipe which means which means it's going to lead to probably an increase in the pipe pressure and uh, damage in there so what you do the solution is uh, you drill a hole and add a tank and we call this tank is a surge tank and the idea is um, is that um, you're going, um, this tank allows you to uh, maintain a constant pressure, so approximately a constant pressure, it prevents you from uh, having an excessive increase in pressure inside the pipe, uh, but for, for as long as the, as the pipe, as the, for as long as uh, the container or the tank has not filled up and starts spilling over and causing uh, other types of problems. Uh, so that's why it's called a surge tank. It's it's there. It's more like a capacitor in electrical engineering where it deals with this extra charge um, without having to burn other components and um, uh, cause um, undesired consequences. So the question is, this tank has a time constant and it can tolerate an, a time of imbalance between the in, inlet and the outlet of, the, of this section. And the question is, um, how much time do we have uh, of imbalance, uh, two and a half, 1.9? So they should either be both two and a half or should either be both 1.9. But in this case, the, that imbalance, we can, we can tolerate it for so much time. And that's the question here. What is this time that it takes to fill the tank? Because after you fill the tank, it's gonna spill over. Um, and that's not, uh, obviously not a good thing, at least from the looks of it. Right, so um, this is the, the background uh, for this type of surge tank is, now the question is, how much time is it going to take us to go from 30 centimeter to one meter so to go up another 70 centimeter this the choice of the critical volume 
uh, that we decide to use is actually going to be very critical because all the equations we're going to, to write are going to depend on that particular control volume. So let me give you one example. So I could use this as my control volume, uh, the one drawn in red. You'll see there is mass flow rate coming in, mass flow rate leaving, the pipe itself, and I'm conserving the mass of water. Uh, the pipe itself does not have any capacity to to um, accumulate water. So all that difference in water is going to actually uh, go up here. So if I do this type of control volume, I will know how much mass flow rate goes out through the third opening which is between the pipe and the tank. So that helps me to know how much water goes into the tank. Then I can pick another control volume, which is the tank itself. But I've, I should have already solved this. And with this tank, I know how much, from the previous step, how much water has is actually coming through the bottom port. And then I would expect there would be accumulation of water inside the tank, a DMDT. And then I balanced, I would balance those two terms um the incoming flow and the dmdt and then i can uh, find how much time i'm going uh, to need to fill my tank or i can tolerate uh, before my tank spills over so now we can combine so then i can pick a third control volume that includes the whole system and this is the one that we are going to um to do so these are the first two are sort of intuitive but you have to do it in two steps i can do it in three in uh, and just one step by in, by having one inlet, one outlet, and just um, a control volume that has uh, an accumulation term or a last term. In this case, it's an accumulation term. So the rate of change of mass inside the control volume is going to be equal uh, the summation of all mass flow rates that come uh, through all inlets. We only have one inlet minus the mass flow rates leaving through all outlets. And here we only have one outlet. Uh, so we're working with this control volume. This is my inlet. And right here is my uh, outlet. Um, then I can write the, because I have single inlet, single outlet, the mass flow rate going, the rate of change of mass per unit time inside my control volume is equal to be, is going to be equal to the balance between the M dot in and M dot out. And um, so the rate of change of mass inside the control volume uh, will be rho v times a for the in and out. And let's write the mass inside the control volume. So let's just uh, pay attention for, for one second here. Uh, so what I've done is I, I said that this volume, the volume of water in this part of the tank, of the system of the control volume, is m0. That's the mass of uh, that's the mass of water contained in this part of the pipe and this connection, and I'm going to call the water in the rest of the control volume, which is the the tank, uh, just m. So that's what I'm doing here. Or I, I I'm using here m1. So let's call it, let's use m1. So that's m0 and that's m1. So m0 I'm just going to leave it in terms of m0, and the mass inside the tank is going to be the diameter, the area of the tank multiplied by the height of the water inside it, which is this height, the actual height uh, of water inside the tank, which is H, which is what we have uh, here. And the area we're using is the cross-sectional area, the pi capital D uh, squared. Uh, let's leave M0 to be M0. And now if I take the derivative dm by dt of the mass inside the control volume, because M0 is constant, the pipe itself does not, and this connection do not, uh, they're always filled with water and they don't have any accumulation or loss of mass, then the dm dt, dm0 by dt is actually going to be equal to zero. Uh, and then I end up with uh, the, the d by dt of rho h times the cross-sectional area. The density of the tank is constant, uh, of the water in the tank is constant, and the cross-sectional area of the tank is constant. So I, um, I get uh, them out of the differential, so rho a tank times dh dt. Uh, so let's take this and plug it up here in this equation, or actually this equation. 
Uh, so I get rho A tank dH dt gives me rho V in A n minus rho V out A out. So the density is cancelled out. And um, then the inlet area and the outlet area is the area of the inlet pipe and the outlet pipe. And they are actually the same A in, and A out are the same, which is A. Uh, we have the area of the tank. This gives us the rate of change of mass inside the tank, which if I know the, if I can compute the, this rate of change, then, um, then I can, with that, base, with that rate of change, I can uh, see what the height H is going to be, starting from a known uh, initial height, which we are uh, given. Um, so the take the area of the tank to the right hand side so I get the area of the pipe divided by the area of the tank because A in and A out are the same and I get V in minus V out the area of the pipe is pi over 4 small d square and the area of the tank is pi over 4 capital D square so the pi over 4 goes away and I end up with D over D square and we will see this quite a lot uh, when we are solving examples uh, the ratio of diameter squared. Um, it's always going to show up in in mass conservation uh, because it's an area um, because it derives from the area. And substitute for Vn and V out and you're going to get your dH dt to be 0 0.153. And now if you want the height you separate variables so dH dt and integrate so you get H minus H0 is 0 0.0153 t minus t0 which is uh, which is 0 and then you get the time you need um, uh, so if I have so the uh, to make it simple I have 7 I have 30 centimeters and what's left is 70 so divide uh, the 70 centimeter 0 0.7 meter uh, divided by this dh dt which is 0 0.0153 0.0153 and you're going to uh, end up with the time that you need and that's going to be around 46 seconds so this surge tank has a time constant uh, of probably around one minute it's already filled um, to one third um, so if it's if you start empty you have almost a full minute, but if you're if you start with the with, with the place where we started at at 30 centimeters, it's going to require 46 seconds to um, to fill up. Okay, so that system allows for this much time for uh, an imbalance in my system, and you'll see this quite a bit in industrial processes, just like you would see capacitors a lot in. Um, and electric circuits. So we will stop here and in the next lecture we will uh, uh, introduce the um, conservation of linear momentum equation as written for a control volume. So what we call the integral form of the linear momentum conservation or control volume. Okay, thank you and talk to you next time.